What's going on guys and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing Community. Listen, in this video I want to talk about specifically when I pull out my rotary polisher when I'm doing some simple paint correction. Actually, this is not simple paint correction. This is a pretty aggressive two-stage correction you see on this Jeep Grand Cherokee on this black paint here with my rupees there. But I want to talk about when I pull out my rotary polisher, which you'll see in this video clip by clip because it's a question that I had definitely a lot of confusion around years ago, and many people still seem to, partly because there's so much confusion about freaking paint correction and polishers in the world. So first of all, let me just say, if you are a total beginner, and you are looking to get into the paint correction game and ceramic coating game without having to deal with all the BS and the hype, go below in the YouTube description box and grab my free five-part video series where you can literally have never touched a ceramic coating or a polisher before, and by the end of that free five-part video series, you will be able to not only technically know how to do both of those things, but also be able to actually sell them and start making money with your customers. All right, so just for some context, what I'm doing in this video is a a two-stage paint correction, actually relatively aggressive paint correction on this Jeep Grand Cherokee. The customer, it's actually a 16-year-old girl who uh, has never driven it before, but her dad purchased it for her. This uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee has been repainted. It is black paint. It sits outside 24-7. It has never been detailed, and the paint was in absolutely terrible condition. In fact, as you see me using the rotary right here on the right side, on the passenger side door, you can see all those swirls in the paint from my light. That passenger side door has not yet been corrected. When do I pull out my rotary because you've been seeing me use the DA in the beginning of this video and now you see me pulling out the rotary. Here's the one, let's say among many reasons, but one particular reason I pulled it out in this particular scenario with this particular paint correction. Number one, on this little section here of the door behind the passenger side door on the middle there, I actually did address it with my dual action before I pulled out my rotary. And what did I find? In a lot of ways, the swirls didn't go untouched, but they just didn't get corrected near at the level that I need them to during this aggressive first part of my two-stage paint correction. I also have already corrected at least my for initial correction, uh, the entire vehicle basically, except for the door you see being corrected here, as well as the passenger side door and the front fender. And so truth be told, at the end of the day, I just got a little tired. So when I inspected with my light and saw, okay, my dual action polisher didn't do the correction I needed it to do in this particular instance at the end of the day when my arms are tired, because I have my rotary pulled out, I wanted to go ahead, grab it, know that I can get the correction done relatively quickly just by doing it with the rotary and move on to the next panel. Now, I want to be extremely, extremely clear with what I just said. I pulled out the rotary to correct in the first stage of this two-stage paint correction the middle part of this panel. Not because the dual action will not do it, but because I am already familiar with this car's paint because I've already actually corrected basically the whole thing and I've spent all day doing it, I recognize the limitations and the advantages of using the DA in this particular instance. No, I will not always pull out the rotary in order to correct areas like this. The reason I do it is because I got to know the paint over working with it today and realized, okay, rather than taking a little bit more time than I really need to with my dual action, let me just go ahead and get this done with my rotary because yes, I'm trained on the rotary, know how to use it. And so I decided, hey, let's not waste time. Let's just go ahead and get it done. I want to repeat myself. Yes, the dual action could have corrected it. It just would have taken a little bit more time than I really wanted to spend in this moment. Now, another reason why in this specific moment I'm pulling out the rotary is because and this is a bit counterintuitive and I want to explain this because I know some people are going to say, hey, you're using this huge pad on the rotary when you could be using something smaller to get in those tiny cracks and crevices. So this is actually on purpose. One of the other reasons, let's say the second major reason here that I pulled out the rotary in this particular instance is because once again, as my arms get tired and I don't quite have the patience at the end of the day in certain instances to wait for the dual action to do things, I want to be clear once again, I'm not saying the dual action is or is not my preferred method method. In fact, most of the time I would rather reach for the DA and it doesn't always have to be something that takes way longer and is slower. A lot of those myths in the detailing world persist because people keep repeating them, but they're not necessarily true. It's also not necessarily true that the rotary is, the rotary is always faster. But in this particular situation, because I'm dealing with this, let's say, harder paint and there's a lot of swirls here that I want to take care of pretty aggressively, pretty quickly, 
and I've already gotten to know the paint, and I know what it's like to work on this particular body line, this particular character line, this particular panel, because I already worked on it on the other side of the uh, car with my DA, I actually wanted to introduce the rotary with a larger pad because it would be easier to correct this area that you see me correcting right here in this video, this sloped area, these character lines with the rotary. I can actually put that pad, because it's spinning on that single axis, I can really dial it in to this really small area. A lot of people say, well, why wouldn't you just pull out a DA with a smaller backing plate, or even a rotary with a smaller backing plate. I actually don't want to do that. I like the backing plate that I have on here fitting the seven inch pad because I can use the lip of the pad. And once again, this just comes with experience, comes with time as you use things. And I think a lot of times when people comment like, well, we have to use the smaller backing plate. It's like, well, you could, but I can actually do this faster with the larger backing plate and the larger pad because I can use that side lip of the pad, tilt it, manipulate my polisher in certain ways in order to get this done quickly. So just to clear up any confusion here, the two main reasons why I wanted to pull out the rotary here is because number one, I got to know the paint. I realize I'm dealing with a panel that's very, very swirled. My arms are tired and I just want to take care of it quickly. And in this specific scenario, I knew I could do it faster with the rotary. In addition to that, I can actually manipulate the polisher and put it in a place more conveniently and less stress on my arms in as far as like the shape of the pad and the shape of the rotary and the motion of the rotary in this instance when I'm doing this body line. Those are two reasons why I will pull out my rotary rather than the DA. Guys, remember, if you're looking to get in the paint correction world right now, even as a total beginner or ceramic coating world, go below, grab my free five-part video series, and I will see you guys in the next video.